Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place for creative and inspiring learning from around the world. Listen to teachers, parents and mentors share how they are supporting children to live their best authentic life and are proving to be a guiding light to us all. Hello, welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast. We're delighted to have you with us. And if this is a first time listen for you, thank you so much for being here. Today we're focusing on financial literacy and I'm delighted to be chatting to John Alvarado and he's the founder of Teach Financial Literacy. John spent 10 years teaching maths in a school with 80% free and reduced lunch students and two years teaching financial literacy with a school with 70% free and reduced lunch students. Coming from a family of poverty, he understands the challenges and barriers poverty presents mentally, emotionally and financially, and his aim is to help students and families with important financial literacy topics that can help them become college and career ready. Now, just before this really important conversation with John, here's a quick thank you to our sponsor. I'd like to thank the National Association for Primary Education for their continued support and sponsorship of the Education on Fire podcast. In March, they have a brand new conference which is online called Towards the Balanced and Broadly Based Curriculum. Now, the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on children's education may be perceived as a justification for narrowing the curriculum at the expense of the arts and the humanities. But this conference will explore the case for preserving young children's entitlement to as rich and diverse a curriculum as possible. Dr. Yude's keynote lecture will set the scene, highlighting some key issues and considering some lessons to be learnt from the period of lockdown. The subsequent presentations will focus on classroom practice, providing a spotlight on innovations which have been implemented in school and offering guidance for the future. Now, to find out more about this conference, please go to nape.org.uk forward slash conference. That's nape.org.uk forward slash conference. Hi, John. Welcome and thank you very much for being on the Education on Fire podcast. Mark, it is great to be here. Thank you so much for having me and I am, I am so grateful to be on with you. So financial literacy is something which I think is incredibly important and something which just isn't covered. And and it's assumed, I think, sometimes that it is covered within the family home or something which you kind of learn by osmosis also Mm. as you start to grow up. And that's great if you happen to live in that environment, but Mm. that's not the same for everyone. And I I understand from your experience and, and your teaching experience that you know, being able to support children from that sort of lower income bracket is a really important thing for you. Oh, huge. Uh, uh, I'm fascinated with with behavior and with poverty and and how that impacts uh, a student and how it can impact them uh, heading into their adult life. And and financial literacy is is one way to help them understand their behavior. And, uh, you know, there's so much potential really in each each child, each student to um, do what they love to do and, and to be able to, to help give them uh, some very important skills is, is, is really important, not only to them, but really to our society uh, as a whole. Um, and tell us a little bit about your experience through that sort of through teaching and, and, and how the, the sort of working with younger people came about. So yeah, I uh, I come from a, a family of poverty. Uh, I was on um, food stamps uh, during during my childhood, and so I, I understand uh, poverty. But I I also was very intrigued uh, in helping people in the teaching profession. It just seemed like a natural fit. And then uh, my teaching experience was around uh, twelve years, ten years as an algebra teacher, two years as a financial literacy teacher. Uh, in low-income schools, so 80 to 85 percent poverty, uh, the school that I was at for 10 years, and then 70 percent poverty, the school that I was at for two years, and so it all just kind of meshed together, and uh, I, I really enjoyed that experience. And in my experience, and I've heard this quite a lot on the podcast, one of the most important factors when um, sort of building a relationship with with pupils generally is kind of that you seeing them and them seeing you and i guess that's even more important when you're working in those kind of schools oh absolutely that uh, you hit the nail on the head and and i think it comes back to of of meeting someone uh, just where they're at in life and and i think that's really uh really really important because it's almost a necessity to meet them where they're at help them understand where where they're at and where they're coming from and um then build on those skills and 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 that's usually when um, you know, uh, they can fight through adversity and, 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 and reach uh, another point where they're really starting to become productive. 
and just take us through the journey of teaching this financial literacy sort of within the school system and then sort of how you sort of teach financial literacy as a product website group of lessons sort of came about yeah so uh i I taught it and it was it was fascinating it was so practical it it felt it was i I could tell the difference between for me anyway um, internally teaching math and algebra versus financial literacy there were just so many more connections and you know a a student couldn't leave uh the classroom saying well how am i going to use this in life you know it that, that conversation that sometimes would happen in math and algebra where you could every financial literacy topic that would come up, I mean, you could apply it to any situation uh, in, in life. And then uh, I basically took those those concepts and taught all the lessons uh, and, and made it very practical and simple for students and families to understand in a, in a business uh, for my business. So uh, yeah, it has been it has been great and it have learned a ton too. And and tell us how it works if if we want to get involved in terms of you go to a website, it's online, it's a downloadable thing. Exactly how does it work? Yeah, so uh, right now I'm selling to schools. And so um, it, like if, if someone has an interest, you know, they could reach out to me and I would set up an appointment and run them through the program. Uh, right now we're given a, a free 30-day trial uh, so to let them see the program and, and how it works. And uh, once once people get in there, they're going to find that it, it's very simple to use and very user friendly, and and the lessons are very engaging as well. And do you sort of deliver it through the school, as in that the students would actually then take it, take part of it? while they're in the school time, as it were, or is that the gateway through to them being able to use it at home as well? Yeah, it is. The, the, the great thing about this program is we offer lifetime access. So the system that it has, um, for example, in one school, they wanted it for their students and their families. And being able to just say, hey, you know, here's your email address, plug it in there, and now you have this program for uh, life because, again, these skills – uh, are not just, um, you know, a temporary time. It, they they can last for a lifetime. So to be able to give them that access for life is a big deal. So yes, yeah, school is part of it, but then they can also access it at home. Uh, all the lessons are taught. So really, it, as long as they have a computer or a phone, that's really all they need. It, 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 so they could be in the school or at home. It really doesn't matter. And And it's set up as a membership. That's right, isn't it? So is it a question of being able to dip in and find the bits and pieces that you need based on your sort of knowledge set? Or is there sort of a, like you say, a lesson plan or a program that you can go from sort of A to Z? Sure, there, there's both. So there's a system, we've set it up. So there's a system where we have four four levels of lessons. There's uh, 10, 10 lessons in each level. And so they can work systematically through the, through the lessons or uh, we've done it so where they can pick and choose what content they need when they need it. So if if they're really um, needing a budgeting activity and, and uh, budgeting's not until the, the 10th lesson, level one, they can still go to that budgeting lesson, complete it and, and get what they need out of it to, to fit where they're at at that current moment. I mean, budgeting is such an important thing. I mean, our kids here range from sort of 19 and down and, and we're in that position now of kind of doing bank accounts and she's mm. getting a job and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, just tell us um, a little bit about the sorts of range of things that you, you actually cover. Oh, gosh, there is uh, every from insurance to budgeting. Uh, one of my favorite lessons is on opportunity cost. Um there's, uh, we talk about risk. That's a, that's a big, big, uh, big deal. Um, our first lesson is a really cool game about, about the mindsets of millionaires and how that's really uh, in all of us. Um, and then uh, we get into, uh, gosh, they have, they can go through an activity where they learn how to interview. And so we, we help them with skills there. And so it's a wide, uh, a wide, wide variety of of financial literacy skills and what i really like about this is the fact that it's a it's that combination between you know i need to know how to learn about this particular theme because like i say if you don't understand about interest rates for example or you don't Mm. understand about budgeting then then you want to know how that works but the mindset thing 
enables you to get something different on a different level, doesn't it? And it's only when you combine all of these things together that I think sort of that feeling that you are in control of your financial destiny, as it were, in some respects, kind of comes together. Uh, oh, gosh, you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. And, and really, I think, you know, all of us are kind of on a journey to understand our own behavior and why we behave and, and we're, we're fascinating people. And so really, uh, you know, with financial literacy, it's not necessarily like a black and white, like, um, hey, just do this and this will happen. It's really to understand, uh, all right, so what are my habits and, and what are my behaviors and how can I work with those? And, and um you know, just to give you an example, a gal buying a gallon of milk might make sense to one person, but it might not make sense for another person. And so really going through that process of, hey, do I understand my behavior and how can I apply that to um, my situation? Yeah, I love I love the personalization of things because you're absolutely right. Everybody's position is different. You know, bulk buying something. Mm -hmm is sure. great in terms of saving money but it doesn't save you money if it's taking you know <laughs> you're spending three or four times more than you need to and it's taking money from elsewhere which is then costing you more so yeah sure. you're absolutely right it's understanding exactly how your lifestyle fits in with all of that absolutely yeah absolutely your again your behavior and and yeah that that example of bulk pricing of, of going to a store that uh, especially, you know, if you don't use the product, then then you're, you know, in essence, losing money. So that's just one example. Um, and we go, that's another another cool lesson that they get to do is comparison shopping. And they get to go through and understand, well, what is it that I that I really like? Is it um, is it style? Is it price? Uh, is it a combination? And and then they get to understand, well, OK, when I when I go out and I buy these things, uh, this is what I'm this is what I'm looking for. So yeah, it's all about understanding behavior for sure. And I also feel sometimes it's understanding how all the different facets of finance come together for any particular thing. So for example, in, in the last few days, um, our middle child has, has passed their driving test, which is fantastic, um, and decided to go shopping with a friend and they decided they go to this particular place because um, there was like a park and ride thing. So it's free to park. And also it was like, I think it was a couple of pounds then just to get on the park and ride bus to go into town, which is brilliant. Um, as they quite rightly said, it was cheaper mm -hmm. than the car parking place, which was nearer to our home, home village. Mm -hmm. But the bit that didn't quite sink in was the fact that this particular town is about 30 miles away from where we are. So the petrol it would have cost to have got there and back in sure. relation to that actually was a little bit probably one sort of counteracted the other. So it's interesting to sort of see how people come about all these things and they, and see what their financial situation is, whatever the, the example is, but in, in the whole, as it were, rather than just those individual immediate gains or, or savings. Ab oh my gosh, absolutely. And that's what, you know, like go back to the opportunity costs. That's, you know, kind of what you're explaining there in that situation. And it's, you know, it's like... Um, uh, let's say, you, you know, you have a, a kid who wants to start their own business someday and, and they're working on their business. And, you know, sometimes our society tells us, well, uh, we shouldn't pay someone to do our chores, like to go out and mow our lawn. And, and so like to your example, like in the short term, that would save, you know, in U.S. dollars, $40 an hour, maybe. But they would also cost you an hour of time working on your business, which then could catapult you into, um, you know, much bigger earnings. So, yeah, it, it's balancing those things and understanding short term versus long term and, and really understanding your risk tolerance as well, too. Yeah, and that really is true, isn't it? And it's also that sort of idea of outsourcing things which you mm. don't think you would do because um, I've, I've come across this before. It's that sense of I need to outsource something in my business because that will save me the time which label me to put the time in. But it's mm. actually often much cheaper to outsource something in your personal life mm. which you can actually then get that time and, and actually be able to sort of, sort of strive from there. Yeah, it, it, it's fascinating how that kind of evolves and you realize that and that's just a big wow moment of, of oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking now more big picture long term than I am just immediate um, and there's so many other factors too and sometimes it gets overwhelming too. So um, yeah, but just I, I think again, giving those skills to at least help them understand 
to let them uh, balance short term versus long term and, and, and just give them the information to help them make the best decision uh, for their situation. So, yeah, it's it, it all mixes together and, and it, it really is fascinating. Yeah, I think that kind of, like we said, the mentality against the practical, a big thing. And and you cover things like credit cards, debit cards and, and debt and that kind of thing. And that must be something which is something which the children can really relate to, especially if they're from lower income families. Oh, for sure. In fact, it, in, in the debt lesson, there's, um, there's a, a really neat activity where they're just given a thousand dollars to spend throughout the month and all these difficult scenarios that they just have to make decisions on. And so, um, you know, we don't want it to get into a point of like, you know, they're going into full stress mode of like, oh, but just understanding, um, you know, uncomfortable emotions that uh, come up and, and, and being able to, um, you know, handle those and then, and then make a plan moving forward. Okay. If, if you get yourself into debt, uh, let's let's figure a way to uh, get out of debt. Maybe it, it is uh, removing credit cards. Maybe it's not you know eating out as much. You know there there's other ways and the, and there's possibilities. There's thousands of possibilities, and so really giving them that hope too, I think, is so incredibly important because uh, you know when you're in poverty, there's a level of uh, you know you don't feel very hopeful, and so giving them that hope and that skill set can really uh, vault them forward too. And and just expanding a bit on that kind of feeling side of it because that's a big part especially mm. with the, around finance often isn't it we, mindset is one thing um, and then the practicalities of these things but the, often the emotional and the feelings that come through it can be a really a really big deal and often it's when you can find a way of taking the emotion out and thinking practically that you can change your situation sure and and sometimes it's it's just sitting in that discomfort of of you know breaking through that whatever emotion there, it might be denial, it might be, um, you know, you feeling uh, shameful and, and, and really just being able to sit there and say, you know, what, I, I'm, I'm not a bad person. It's just I had maybe I, I had a rough month or this this month has been rough. And OK, let's try to figure out how next month or, or the next day can be better. So, yeah, you hit the nail on the head where <laughs> those things are uh almost more important than the, than the financial skills themselves but the financial skills can come in and, and help uh maybe help ease some of that anxiety or stress that's that's there at the surface and i think for all of us listening it's that sense of we're i'm thinking this is changing lives as we're having these conversations you know this is giving access to something which is incredibly important and from a real practical point of view, it's very different than let's learn our times tables or, mm. or let's do some quadratic equations because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it's very real world. And, and, the, and the real world is actually what people relate to most. And then that kind of engages in a way that nothing else does. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that is. And it's so uh, it, it really is, I think, a little bizarre over here in the States that only 21 states require financial literacy. I, I, you hit it again, I'm going to say this again, the nail on the head where it is so practical and it is constant. I mean, it is embedded in every, literally every decision that you make. Um, and it, they use it, they'll use financial literacy skills every day, whether or not they're aware of it or not, that that they're using it. So to be able to like maybe label something that, oh, I, in this case, I'm I'm understanding my risk tolerance. Or in this case, uh, I'm setting a budget because I need to set a boundary. Um, so yeah, it is it is so practical and and um, you know for for a, a student they might not see it until uh, they get into you know like for example your daughter driving a car or or, or whatever um, then it becomes very practical. Oh, I'm living this now. So yeah, getting them the skills is is super important. Yeah, and I think that's a really, a really important thing that, that does come up occasionally here is the fact that we're setting the environment and some of these things that we can do, some of them we can't. So, for example, having financial literacy in every state, like you say, or in every school here in the UK or wherever you are around the world might be a fantastic thing, but that's not necessarily going to happen straight away. Mm -hmm. But actually having access to it is something yeah. that we can do. And actually Absolutely. spreading the words and understanding how that can be 
giving people and like I say the car example is a really really important one you know understanding that it's not just the fuel cost you know it's the insurance and the tax and the <laughs> yeah. this and, oh and then there's a new tire and then there's a service you know all yeah. that kind of thing and sort of seeing that in the rain but you only know that by by the experience that you have and so I think you know if the system's not in place to be able to do that our job partly is to create a, a sort of a, a larger experience that we know about that we can kind of almost like a soft landing as it were we know you haven't covered this elsewhere but we're going to find a way to support you to do that now and like you say it might be in the family home or it might be that through a school they can use a program like this which then enables everyone to have that access which i think is you know what we're saying everyone really needs for sure and and, and i wonder if it will get to a point where it just becomes a mandatory thing it actually becomes a class but yeah there's other avenues too in school there's, you know, before school program, after school program, um, uh, summer school. So, I mean, there's options. It's just, it's just the whole mandatory piece, you know, hopefully it gets to a point like it's math or language arts or science or whatever, because yes, it is, it is definitely a needed, uh, in, in practical application they can make. Yeah, and that's what I really like about the membership model is the fact that if there's if there's someone here that's hearing this and thinks, oh, I really want to help my students, whatever mm-hmm. that means. It might be their class. It might be they happen to have um, a club outside of school or a club mm. attached to school or something like that. Like say, you know, we're going to do a summer program and we want some financial element to that. Sure. Then, like say, it's easy to adapt it in any which way if you're just in a position to offer it. Ab- yeah, absolutely. The the adaptation uh, in the internet is just, it's so powerful now and the opportunity that it gives uh, people to access, you know, you just literally with the program and uh, you just have to have a computer or you just have to have a phone and and then just, you know, it's it's that big step of just getting started. Once you get started, then then you can get some momentum and, and one skill after another and and um, yeah, so it, it is it is very powerful. Yeah, and I, and I like the multifaceted side of that because like you say, one of the things which we know the remote learning aspect has had with the COVID situation is the fact that not every child had access to a For device sure. or whatever. And that's why I love the fact that it can be something that a school or a district or someone takes on board to take that out or if you can do it at home as well. And I, and I think, again, that just goes back to that personalized learning. We want as many options as possible in as many different ways as we can For to reach sure. as many people as we can. And then, and then we, we're making a big difference then. Oh, yeah. And, and I know schools are trying to adjust to these difficult times too of, of figuring out how can we make things more equitable? How can we get you know technology or internet in the hands of, of uh, everybody really. So it's, it's equitable across the board. So yeah, I know schools are trying it and it's, and it's just a, it's a challenging time, uh, for everyone, but yeah, schools are, are, um, doing their best. And so I, I admire, uh, you know, schools for, for trying to stay in session and for trying to, uh, put their heads together and figure out ways to, uh, get their students the resources because it is a challenging time and it's very stressful on a lot of people. So let's just flip into the conversation of your school experience. You know, we've Mm. talked about those teachers who sort of speak on a personal level to someone. There's there's must be someone that you remember or or an experience within school which has kind of put you on this kind of entrepreneurial path and and, and created the life that you've got now. Sure. I I think just more in general, like in general, I I had a a good experience, a good experience. And and I just remember the overall care. I remember my fifth grade teacher just because she was <laughs> she was so nice. <laughs> then I remember my eighth grade civics teacher because he made class fun and, and we got to do some challenges. Uh, but then I, I'm also grateful that my teachers uh, were aware of of maybe uh, my situation at home because I remember one Christmas not having um, not having presents under the tree. And uh, we, we, we had people come up and, and deliver presents for us. So I know that they were aware of what was going At that time, I didn't realize it. Now, as I'm able to reflect, I've, it's, oh, wow, someone, someone out there uh, cared about the fact that we were struggling. And so that, that's meant a lot. And, um, you know, to say, I don't know who those people are, but uh, very grateful for, for just the overall experience. Yeah, and I think the impact, and again, it's back to how you feel, isn't it? It's amazing oh how gosh, e- even yes. when you're talking about, you know, 
practical lessons and and all of the stuff that we all do day to day the the way you feel and the way mm. you make other people feel and vice versa just that's the power that changes the world really <laughs> you uh, you hit the nail on the, it's that's the thing yeah and it everyone talks you know sometimes it talks like oh, i don't have but feelings are a part of it and you uh, you're going to repeat what you said how someone feels um, you know, if we can get them in a, in, a, in a good mindset and show them that we care, then yeah, things can things can really take off for anybody. So absolutely. And what was the best piece of advice you've ever been given? And can you remember who gave it to you? Oh, from from a teacher standpoint, or just uh, just in general, it can be, be anything anything at all, but something which is really obviously going to stick out for you. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I think we all face is you know adversity. Life is gonna uh, it's not going to be easy. And and um, I came across a class a couple years ago that uh, for all these sometimes negative thoughts that come into our mind to detach yourself from those thoughts. And really it's a self-talk uh, strategy of just telling yourself it's just a thought. So anytime you're experiencing a negative emotion or uh, maybe you feel like it's getting too hard, you tell yourself it's just a thought. And that has, when, when there's been times when, you know, face adversity in business or just in life, um, I go back to that quite a bit. Hey, John, right now it's just a thought. And I think that is so, uh, practical and applicable for literally anyone so that, that's been a helpful uh, self-talk strategy for me yeah I think I mean this is obviously a massive topic when you go into that thing but I think understanding who you are as an essence as it were you know what the person is who's here as a as opposed to that mind chatter and all those things and like I say just having a practical thing you can do just kind of I think just realigns yourself with who you are and you know like we say there's there's a, a big conversation about what that means to every individual but I think it's the same for everybody it's, mm. it's understanding that there's who you are and that's with you all the time as opposed to what's happening or what you're thinking and I think even understanding that is an is a starting point is, is something which is going to support you in life. Oh, sure. I mean, I, we're all, you know, we're all connected, you know, this, this common humanity of, you know, we might not experience anxiety and stress uh, in the exact same way, but we experience that feeling. And so being able to have empathy for uh, someone else that we understand, we may not, we understand the feeling of stress or the feeling of anxiety or the feeling of, of whatever negative emotions coming up and, and really be there to support one another um, it is a big deal. And what advice would you give your younger self? And, and and I always think about this in terms of how I would take that as a younger person. And mm. I know we get given all sorts of thoughts and advice, which we like to say we reflect on afterwards where you think, oh, yeah, that was really <laughs> useful to know. But uh, again, in that same way, if you've never heard it, you don't know. So I think mm. it's a really important question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about you, Mark, but I, I think um, just taking more risk. I would, I would tell my younger self to take more risk um, to do different things. And, uh, especially, um, you know, sometimes your decisions, they don't have to make sense to everyone else. Uh, and again, I guess it comes back to understanding your own behavior and, and, and that inner drive that you have and, and that path that, uh, you feel like, like you're supposed to take that doesn't always have to make sense to everyone else. And so, um, I, I think it, all revolves around risk and, and just stretching yourself because really that's when adversity comes up and that's when you can learn about yourself and, and really grow. So I would just be to take more risk overall. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that pathway to growth is the is the way that it makes you want to get up for the next day to do mm. the next thing. And like I say, it's all those small steps which take you all the way through your life, hopefully. And, um, sure. and that that really just gives you gives it gives you that sense of purpose. I think in a for way sure. which isn't isn't kind of oh, I'm going to be doing this by then. It's just I'm going to do this now because it feels right, right and then Absolutely. see where those steps take you. Absolutely. So do you have um, a podcast, a book, a film, a song, or, or any resource that's had a really big impact on your life? And why was that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And, um, you know, right now I, I'm, I'm connected with Nikki Rouse. She's in Sales Maven, and she has helped me so much with sales. And I'm just getting into her content. I love her to death, and she has phenomenal content. Uh, but I will go back to when I made the transition from um, the classroom to being an entrepreneur. That was a that was a massive shift, and um, 
I took a breakthrough uh, coaching program. It was a 12-week program uh, on anxiety and self-doubt. Um, all those mindset issues there from uh, Julia Christina. She's a, a registered therapist up in um, Vancouver, and it totally blew me out of the water. I, it was it was fascinating um, because one of the things I'm so interested in is is how we behave as humans, and and <laughs> it it brought so many light bulb moments that. Um, that it was it was fantastic. I know right now she has a membership. Uh, she does more of a membership, so I don't know if she offers the class, but it was it was fascinating. The skills I uh, use today. I mean that's fantastic advice, and we're going to have links to all these things on the show notes. So if you go to educationonfire.com forward slash teach financial literacy, the show notes will pop up, and and all these details will be here. And um, and Nikki Rash has been on our Learning on Fire mm. podcast before, so we'll have a links to that as well, Great. so you can hear hear from her directly. Because like I say, she's a, a wonderful lady with a, with Absolutely. an awful lot to offer. Absolutely, yeah, she's she's phenomenal. Well, John, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and uh, and everything that you're doing here as you know as we've explained it, it's such an important um, thing for so many people and I think it will change so many people's lives so so please tell us where can people find out more about it and get involved sure great and mark thank you so much for having me on and, and your platform too is is great and and what you're doing and, and your wisdom as well so thank you for uh, the connection before uh, we leave here but it's uh, right now, you can email me at john at teachfinanciallit.com. That's J-O-N, then the at symbol, T-E-A-C-H-F-I-N-A-N-C-I-A-L-L-I-T.com. There's also uh, my website, www.teachfinanciallit.com. Uh, there's a way to send me a message on there. And uh, yeah, reach out. I'd love to hear from you and love to love to connect with new people as well. So don't be afraid to reach out. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And, and this is the reason I love the podcast so much, because it gives it gives the understanding, the personality and the person behind all of these products and all the things which are happening. And I think when it becomes a person to person thing, it makes such a big difference. So, yeah, thanks very much again for being here. You bet, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on. I wish you the best. Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch, go to educationonfire.com. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.